Hey everybody, Jim Edwards here, and welcome to another edition of the Sales Copywriting and Content Marketing Hacks podcast. I'm your host, along with my trusty co-host and podcast producer, Mr. Stu Smith. Welcome, Stu. Hello, Jim. How are you? I am fantabulous, and today we have a very special event. We have hit episode number 100. We are in triple digits, Stu. Way to go, buddy. All right. So well done on that one, 100 episodes. You know how many people have said over 100 times they should start a podcast, but don't even do episode one? Uh, countless people. Probably a lot. Yes, And not. it's countless because I don't know how to count them, but I'm sure there's a few. So what are we talking about today, Stu? What's on tap? Well, we're doing part two of the Jim and Stu show, pretty much. Um, we have a uh, kindness movement that we are helping Karen uh, start to promote. She has a new book coming out in February, um, and and it's coinciding with. Um, Congrats yeah. on your book coming out, Karen. Yeah. By the way, yeah, I think it's coming out in January. But it's what she's oh, trying January. to do is create a kindness challenge to go with um, the random acts of kindness week in February. So. Okay make a movement around her book. So what I was thinking is we would just go down this list of things that I made after seeing this question. I was like, you know what? You need some secrets to make your book go viral. Mm, who wouldn't like to have their book go viral? Yes. Let me ask you a question though. Do you really think with all this COVID crap that's taking place, do you think that viral thing. videos and causing something to go viral, do you think that might trigger some people, Stu? Should we perhaps come up with some new nomenclature when it comes to these things? Or do you think viral will still be an acceptable descriptor? I'm yeah, that's, good. that's a good point. That's a good question. You know, I, I think we should uh, shut down viral. <laughs> Call it something else. 2020 has been a mess. What's another word for viral? It's kind of like, what's another name for a thesaurus? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know? Yeah. Book of words. Spreadable. Yeah. Mm, that that has your, some make, other con secret, context. Mm. Make your book go sell like We're crazy. Just, nah, we'll just go like viral. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll stick with viral. Get popular. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Viral. We're sticking All with right. viral. Okay. All right, so you have this list with me, right? I do not because well, I couldn't find the email you sent me. All so. right, well, I'll just go through the whole thing and we'll we'll uh, have some banter after each one of these secrets. What do you say? <clears throat> Sounds good. All right, so number one in the secrets to making your book go blank is... Uh, <laughs> Find, find your people. You have to find some people, right? So build a community with groups on social media and, you know, find people that you would, you would think that would be a part of your community. It could be start off with just family and friends at first, but then their friends and their families start to um, gravitate towards your message yeah. And about a month before the book releases, invite readers in the community to the kindness challenge that you're putting on. And okay. are we uh, still I'm, on number one? Or are you yep. reading the whole damn thing? No, 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 no. Still no, okay. number one. You know, I'm certain that they will help you spread the word, you know, because they've already believed in your message and which goes right along with your book. So finding your people to, you know, create this movement for you, I think is number one. You got to okay. do it. Now, do you have any particular wizards that can help with that kind of content? Well, you know, Stu, interestingly enough, what I heard you say is that before you do any of this, you need to define who your perfect avatar is who would be interested in participating in this kindness movement. Absolutely. So the number one thing I would say is that you should go use the avatar wizard and define exactly who that person is because then you can actually use that to create content and tell the story of the type of person who should be participating in the kindness movement and say does this sound like you 
The other one that I would say people should mess with would be the hidden persuasion wizard, because I think that could be in, that could be really effectively done as well. So those would be the two. Do I need to show them or or just yeah. talk about them? Okay, yeah, but those yeah, I think those would fine. be the two. Those would be the two I would say the avatar, especially the avatar wizard though. Yeah, that one's a classic. You know, I've used that avatar wizard one to get my mind right, but also to uh, create some neat content around the guy that I was, you know, being my avatar. You know, are you this guy? You know, and it's like got a lot of clicks. Like, yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly i need to okay. read this <clears throat> all right so number two is do you go big or do you go small right that means yes it's very important to find groups with large numbers of people on them and however don't dismiss the ordinary person who will love to be a part of your program and carry on your message to their own communities you know, so don't doubt the power of small. So I think the biggest thing that that speaks to me as far as, especially for Karen's book launch, is that a lot of times people, and I'm guilty of this too, all right? When you're promoting your book and you're trying to create a movement, you never know where the connections are going to come from. So you think that, okay, I only need to go after the big fish to do an interview or to do a live or to do a special guest blog post or something like that. But you never know where the big connection is going to come from. You, you might think, Oh, this person with this huge following, if, if, if only it's, it's, it's the big hitter thing. If, if this one person would endorse my book, we're all going to get rich. And then they ignore you or they do and nothing happens. And then the one little person with the hardly any following, or you think they're a little tiny fish, they have the one person that creates the connection that change that really does change everything. So when you we're doing something like this, and you're trying to make your book go viral, you're trying to make your movement go viral. You you need to go all in, and that means do the interview with the little. That sounds terrible. Do the interview with the little fish and the big fish and the medium fish and the any fish, but do it in such a way that it doesn't drive you nuts. Mm. Don't do hour long interviews. <coughs> have a 15 minute interview that you can do. Have a 30 minute interview. Have, have something where it's crazy value that you're willing to share and drop everywhere because you don't know where the, the big stuff and the big stuff or the little stuff's going to come from. Agree. I mean, some of my best promotions have been through customers who shared their experiences, you know, where they took a picture of the book and said, this is what I did today. You know, <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So number three, Jim, uh, say yes to everything. Just like Jim was saying this, in the this Smurf juice. <laughs> yes. Say yes uh, to everything. Okay, what? Yeah, you say yes what to you everything. About there, means, Taylor? You know, ask people to be on their podcast, write a review, send an ebook version, and test, you know, ask for a testimonial. Uh, but you have to also say yes to every QA, every podcast, every offer for a reprint or guest post, you know, no matter with the size or the popularity. You know, make some uh guests uh also be on your blog and uh, have short videos with them. And you can use many of the Jim Edwards method wizards. I personally like the single juicy tip wizard for um, getting some ideas for um, how you're going to be a part of this uh, yes to everything movement. And Jim was, you know, a previous one kind of went into this one with you just say yes to big, medium, small size and, and have a, segment in your mind or at least uh, a script ready for the 15 minute uh interview and the 30 minute interview and go like that so you're not I, overwhelming yourself yeah i think what this tells me is go all in go all in smart use tools to help you to do things um quickly and efficiently rather than reinventing the wheel over and over and over that's the thing just because you're saying yes to everybody it doesn't mean it has to be a unique yes you, you need to have your stuff done so that you can make it work, but 
there's nothing to say that you can't be answering the same questions when you're talking to different people. There's nothing to say that you can't have the same theme when you're doing guest blog posts. There's, there's nothing that says you can't do that. So don't think when you say, when you're saying yes, you're saying yes, smart, you're repurposing, you're reusing, and, and you're, you're just doing it in a way that doesn't create stress, but gives you the opportunity to maintain your energy level and be able to share effectively. That's important because some people might think, man, if, if 20 people ask me for a guest blog post, that means I got to write 20 unique posts. No, it doesn't. So use that the same true. one or modify yeah. one over and over. Modify the same one to 20 different audiences. There you go. Be a lot of time. Okay. Okay. Number four. Um, this is why Jim and I created the Media Marketing um, Academy was you have to remember that you are a media company that sells a book. Right. But don't forget traditional media. You know, it's not all social media and podcasts. Radio, newspapers are also very useful tools. So make sure you develop a press release for local newspapers, radio shows. Check out the following. Jim's press release wizard and what I do in one sentence wizard That's can right. really help you get your foot in the door. Absolutely. Because when you are trying to get, especially traditional media to cover you, it's all about the hook and it's all about the news. Most people screw up tra getting traditional media, regular newspapers, TV, local or national or regional, because they make it all about themselves instead of making it all about the customer, which is the viewer of that particular media. And so you, you will stand out massively compared to everybody else who's trying to get publicity if you just, just by doing it right, because most people do it wrong. And the way you do it right is to make it about the end consumer of the information, which is the reader or viewer of that media. Yeah. And, you know, I would try to set yourself a goal of contacting so many newspapers and radio shows a day. Doesn't have to be a whole lot, just a couple, but have an ultimate goal of being that last segment on the nightly news. You know, where they do that five minute segment of here's something happy today because the last 25 minutes have just sucked. Right. Right. And, <laughs> and Karen can tie it in with the upcoming event of it's Random Acts of Kindness Week. Yep. And when this happens, this is in February, right? Yep. OK, so after all of the again, we never talk about politics and we never talk about religion. OK. But she can tie in with the new optimism of a, of a new administration and other stuff. And, and I mean, you want to tie it to current events and yep. what's going on. You know, you could tie it in with Valentine's Day. If you tie it in with something that's going on right now, that's, that's a technique called newsjacking. Mm. where you are hijacking a story in the news and tying something else to it. And that can work really, really well if you come up with a, with a cool angle. So, you know, tying the Random Acts Kindness Week to something else that's going on and creating a kindness movement, you'd be surprised who'd be willing to pay attention to that and, and write a story about you or basically take your press release, which is a pre-done story, and publish it with very little changes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, number five, uh, probably the best piece of advice Jim has ever given me was get a professional cover and a movie poster done. And, um, you know, you go to Fiverr to do that. F I V E R R dot com. That's right. And that just, that just gives you a really, really professional image for everything that you're doing. Yep. Which is critical. And it's pennies on the dollar too. I mean, you're not paying hundreds of dollars for these things. It's you know, you, you might break a twenty, yeah, you know, to, to get one of these things, and that that's pretty impressive. Plus, you feel really cool seeing your mug up on a, a movie poster. Yeah, it's fun, which is cool. So, another piece of uh, Jim's advice, as well as some crowdsourcing from last week, we came up with the term "hook, help, and herd." So what is what is the news hook that really grabs their attention? 
Jim actually said it earlier, and that was uh, how what would you say how sharing is the most selfish thing that you can do or no, how ran, how random, random acts, acts of kindness are the most selfish thing you can do. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. You know, what's the news hook that really gets attention? I think that's one of them, you know, yep. so you hook them with the headline and a cool photo, and then you help them with some helpful tips on how you can be randomly kind. Perhaps, some a, ideas. Li perhaps a listicle. A listicle. There you go. I love. I just love saying that. I love yep. just. I, I love titillating listicles. Yep. And then you heard them towards the kindness movement. That's right. Gr Facebook page the or whatever, and then they buy your book. So, yep. hook, help, and heard. That's a classic that's right. one, Jim. That's, I like that's that. Classic. One. Now we're gonna get that. We're gonna get a T-shirt made with like, uh, like a like a fishing rod and a cow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like it. Uh, kindness movement hashtag scraper, right? You you need to everything that you post on social media needs to have the same hashtag, like kindness hashtag kindness playbook hashtag kindness movement on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. And uh, Jim's hashtag scraper wizard is a really good one, but you can also get some title description hashtag wizard um, on the Jim Edwards movement. Or method as the well. The Jim Edwards movement. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a movement. Um, <laughs> you know, the thing is, whenever something like that is happening, there's there's gonna be stuff where people have an increased awareness of what's going on with that, and you should definitely um, be aware of that. And what I what I mean by that is that during that during that week, there's going to be other people pushing it, and there are going to be hashtags and whatnot. And you've got to be conscious of those hashtags of what's the kind of keeping your pulse on the market, just so you can get more people to, um, you know, pay attention to what you're doing. So so it's like a missed opportunity if you don't. Is what I'm trying to say. Um. So, yep. So okay. going. Okay. Number eight, last one is uh, testimonial and thank people. Thank those who are helping you. You know, give them a shout out and post on their social media pages. You know how, or post their social media pages on how much you appreciate them. With you know, sharing, you know, your book cover by sharing your kindness movement, or maybe even having the the most emotional kindness movement, you know, of the group, you know, offer to help them in return. You, you may never know. Um, you never know how, you know, they may also be, you know, starting up a blog or starting up a, a website and you can help them promote, you know, something in their business as well. You know, say thanks by being helpful. It's a kindness movement. You should definitely be saying thank you after well, people help you. And there's also a, a saying, dance with the one who brung you. And yep. that's important because if you ask somebody for help, you need to recognize them. And I know some people, like, especially in this whole thing, you know, well, it's random acts of kindness and kindness and it does kindness is its own reward. BS. People love to be thanked and you should thank people. Love, people love to be recognized and you should recognize people. You need to do what Stu just said. You need to thank the people who helped you, you because you're probably going to want them to help you again and you should help them. What goes around comes around. And, and the way that you're going to get people to promote you is by promoting other people. And not every, you know, not everybody reciprocates, but I'm a big believer in karma that what you put out in the universe will come back to you. Maybe not from the source that you expect, but it, it will come back and it has to come back. So that's a great one. When when you do one of these things and you ask people for help, make sure you you say thanks. Make sure you, you know, do that. Can I show something real quick? Because yeah. I, I just while we were doing this, I fired up the hashtag scraper and I just put in kindness and look on Instagram. You know, kindness has got nine million <laughs> tags out there. Damn. Kindness matters. Treat people with kindness. Spread kindness. Random acts of kindness. 
um, choose kindness. So, so there's a whole bunch of really popular ones and, and there are a whole bunch of smaller ones that I think you'd be able to really be able to, um, you know, look at this kindness movement, 17,000 and I'm opening up Instagram over on this one. Um, but I think, I think you'd be able to, to get some traction out of this one. So don't discount this because social is very important when you're talking about time events like this, like this kindness, random acts of kindness week, there's gonna be all kinds of stuff going on. Jorge just said recognition creates connection and loyalty. That's great. That's a great way of looking at it. Cool. So I think that this was an excellent 100th episode. What would you tell everybody to take away from this episode, Stu? You know what I would say? What? I would say read this. Can you read that? No. Come on, you can't read that? No, man. Growing pains. It's it's because you it's because it's focusing on your mug instead of the phone. Growing pains. Growth does not occur in the comfort zone. That is true. No, that, that was is... something I posted today. I was real Real uh, pleased with that one. I made that up myself. So what does that have to do with kindness? Nothing. Um, <laughs> but, I, uh... but you don't get to, I think I know what you mean. You don't get to 100 episodes without going through the first 99. And you yeah. don't get the first 99 without doing the first one. And most people quit before they even do the first one. Then they do one or two and they quit. And I know that because I did that a couple times. You know, it just they, you get busy, you don't have time, I don't have time to plan it. All these I don't pop up until you make the commitment to make it happen. And then you say, it's like you said, the first 20 workouts are the hardest. What you mainly said, what you basically are saying is the first month of working out is the hardest. The first 30 sure. days, five days a week for four weeks, that's 20 workouts. And until then it becomes, you know, after that it starts becoming a... Uh, a real habit after you've yeah. been doing it and committed to it. So that's what we, that's what we done, Mr. Do. Yeah. 100. Congratulations, sir. You too. Now, it wouldn't happen without you. So you're the one that gets all the congratulations. <laughs> I just show up and run my mouth, which I'm very good at. My sister's here again this time, I think. And she would, cause she would confirm that's something I've been very good at since a, a small age, just showing up and running my mouth. So we would not have done this if it wasn't for you, the organization, the coming up with the ideas, the reminding me to talk about wizards instead of just random stuff. I mean, all, all the good stuff that you do. So I really appreciate you, man. It never, never would have happened without you and your pickle juice. Well, thank you. That's good stuff. <laughs> well, there you go. Mr. Pickles loves you too, Stu. Mm -hmm. So my next random act of kindness will be going to the Chick-fil-A drive-thru and, <laughs> and making sure ma making sure it's not a van of 10 behind me. That again, <laughs> that is so wrong. You're putting your your that's so that's what I would do, but <laughs> so wrong. It's like, hey, uh hey, that's a single guy in the car. Okay, maybe you, maybe you're just getting a single meal. Man, I always here's how you slide it in so that even yourself doesn't know this is what you're doing. Hey, you know, you talking to the lady at the window. Yeah, I always get the same thing over and over. You know, hey, just out of curiosity, what did the guy behind me get? <laughs> <laughs> and then she tells you, you know what? That sounds good. I'm gonna get that next time. In fact, how much is that? And she's, I was like, uh. so, you know what? I'm gonna pay for that dude's thing. I just, I feel like a sport today. Is that, does that make it better, or is that still like just a totally cheap and 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 just cheesy thing to do? Well, you know, there is a budget to your kindness at some point. Uh, okay. You know. Now, here's another way you could do it. This would be even better. Hey, j I always get the same thing over and over. Just out of curiosity, what the guy, what the guy behind me gets? So he tells you, said, so, "Oh man." That's not good. That's not good for him. Tell you what, here's what he's having instead. <laughs> Get him a water and one of them little cups and just a plain biscuit. No butter, nothing. All right. And here, I'll even pay for it. <laughs> that is nice. So you're doing the guy a favor, man. You're helping him avoid seven, eight hundred calories. I'm gonna tell you what though, their fruit cup there is expensive as hell. 
Yeah, it, it, I I rarely have ever gone to a fast food place and spend twenty bucks as easily as I do at Chick Fil A. But that's it. But but at Chick Fil A, it's like here's the deep fried hunk of heaven on a bun with slathered with butter and pickles and stuff, and it's this much as opposed to oh, you want the healthy option? Do you realize where you are? Do you remember where you are? Okay, we know we have people like you, and it's a real pain in our butt for our supply chain. So, yeah, we have a fresh fruit option. It's eight bucks. Okay, <laughs> think about this. <clears throat> yeah, no waffle fries for you. You're going to get the fruit. Yeah, you want the fruit cup? Eight bucks, Chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it won't even let us allow you to have the lemonade that's loaded with five pounds of sugar in a 16 ounce cup with that fruit cup. So no, diet drinks or water with the fruit cup by default. That's it. That's all you get. Unsweet so, tea. Oh. I usually go with unsweet tea. Oh, that's a good. And it's good my thing. pleasure. And my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> so all anyway, right. I got to think of some better random acts of kindness because, uh, Jim has found a lot of holes in this one. And maybe so. paying for the guy if the if the stuff is how about just saying hello? Okay. I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. In the in the last minute and a half that we have, I want everybody in the comments to put in what is one random act of kindness that you could take that would be something that whether the other person appreciated it or not whether it would be reciprocated or not what is something you could do we're going to help karen by crowdsourcing some stuff here real quick for her plus it might be good for my attitude to see some of these things because i can't think of anything i just keep talking what would be something random kind random act of kindness that you could do i did that at the grocery store once what'd you do paid for the person in front of me they were they were fumbling with their cards and the cards weren't working and I was like, I got it. Just put it on mine. You're good. Was it a whole long thing or was it, it wasn't a whole lot? I mean, things. it might have been 20, 30 bucks, but you know, it, it was nice enough. That was nice of you. Yeah. She was just having, she had two kids running around and she couldn't, she was just having a hard time. I was like, put it on mine. See you later. You know, you know what I'm going to do? Somebody just said, rake a random neighbor's leaves. I'm going to go down and blow off. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I can't do it today because it's raining. But this week, I got one of those really cool blower things on three wheels that's like 200 miles an hour with all these cool warnings about don't get your hands and feet in front of this because it'll blow them off. Damn. I'm going to blow off three of my neighbor's um, driveways of leaves and blow out the ditch. On I'm going to blow out the ditch on the whole private road that's like it's going to be a mile and a half of pushing that thing and i'm going to do that for everybody i'm going to blow out everybody's ditches except the one neighbor i don't like see and i just blew it right there because they don't like that one neighbor and so i said i wasn't going to do his but you know what i'm going to do, do his all. first i'm going to do, do his all. first <clears throat> so there you go you know what i'm going to it's supposed to snow here today so uh i'll get yeah. my neighbors uh she's you know, 80 years old, I'll go get her, uh, get her driveway done. Make my son do it with me. I was just going to say, you're going to say, I'm going to make my kid do it. Yes. <laughs> you're going to do it with me. We're both going to be kind. With you. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, I'm going to send my son out to do that. And you know what? To make sure my random act of kindness works, I'm going to actually, Parker and I are going to watch out the window to make sure he does a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so there are many ways to do it. Open the door for someone who doesn't expect you to open the door for them. Um, there you go. You know, there's many ways to be kind. Doesn't have nice. to be monetary. And I, yeah. In fact, sometimes money, you're just throwing money at it to make yourself feel better. The most valuable thing that you can do for somebody actually is time and attention. Time. Especially absolutely. Especially now with everything that's going on really listening to someone really paying attention to them even for a few minutes can make a huge difference in their lives so. that is true awesome 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 okay well we will be back next time 
with episode 101, which will be just as impressive and amazing as this one. So thank you everybody for joining us. Some great ideas for random acts of kindness. And even though the live show's over, please everybody keep adding to the list and maybe tag a friend and ask them to add to the list. Let's see how far we can make this go. Everybody have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye everybody.